I primed everything with this Steinle Res Gray Primer. It's a Badger product. And then I went over with some pre shading here with some uh, Model Air Black Gray. So now I'm ready to uh, put on some green. Here's the main whole color that I mixed. Um, I get these dropper bottles off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. What I did was it says two to one in the instructions of the XF26 and then one part of the XF5. So essentially it was this whole bottle, half of this bottle. And put some windshield washer fluid in there, mixed it up, sprayed the part. I thought it was too light. I wanted it darker. So I took the other suggested color for weathering, uh, this XF13. And what I did is I took a, uh, a pipette and just filled up four of these and put them in this bottle. I also have a ball bearing in there to help mix it up. So I sprayed everything. And this is this is the color that came out. It's a little bit lighter on screen. It's it's darker in real life, but this looks closer to the color I was looking for. It's got some. It's got more brown in it than it did before. So this is what I'm going to go with. So now to get out the uh, to me a masking tape. Uh, start doing some masking and move on to other colors. I'm using some uh, to me a masking tape tape off all these areas that are going to get sprayed with NATO black this is actually to me is NATO black I just put it in the same bottle so it's always going to be NATO black it's just not the Vallejo kind but I'll spray this and then I will be back yeah, I got it all uh, sprayed all the pieces here so uh, let's uh, take this stuff off here See what we got. good I'll take the rest of these off and then uh, I'll come back with the, the next color to paint all right I sprayed this front area and these two panels in this panel right here using this Tamiya XF 70 17 it's a sea blue I'll still have to uh, mask this section off here and repaint it green but I wanted to just get a straight line it was easier to do it this way first so time to move on to the next color another one of the color color call outs is uh, a one-to-one -one mix of this xf84 dark iron and this xf57 buff so i took these two little containers and put them in another one of these uh, mixer bottles put in a ball bearing so this is good to go so i'm going to move on to spray this color all right, I've got a lot more of the colors on there. I've got the uh, the buff and, and deep iron mix on there, which are these colors here and here, and then there's some on these sides. And then the lighter colors, like on the sides here, here, and here. And I also did a little bit here, is the Tamiya X57 buff. And I still have to do the colors that are in here and then I've got some touch up because I got some overspray here that I didn't uh, I didn't mask off so I need to go back in and fix this back part and then I also need to do these bottom grill parts right here so I'm gonna do all that um, off camera and then when I come back we'll put the lights in I did some more to the uh, the red light part 
glued everything together. I took some um, some of that black styrene and I cut it into some strips and put it along the edges here. Here goes the cat. Put it along the edges here because there's a gap on the sides. And I could have put tulip in there, but I didn't want to wait for it to dry. So I put some black styrene in there, sealed it. I also took some of the CA, put it in this edge because there's a light leak right back here. And then I also used some of that same styrene and covered up these holes. And then put some CA along the back. Because it, like I said, it is gap filling. So then I masked this area off, sprayed it with my Steinol Res Black Primer, let that dry, and then I took some Tamiya X27, which is the clear red, and I mixed it about 60% isopropyl alcohol, and then the Tamiya Red, sprayed here, sprayed here, and then kept spraying over until I get kind of this reddish look to it, reddish orange. And then I sealed everything with the matte finish. So now let me uh, go ahead and glue this into the main piece here. And then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, it's all glued. Yeah, got a fingerprint right here. So fingerprint right there. So I'm gonna have to fix that. But uh, let me turn the light off here. and You can see that there's uh, no light leaks on the top or on the sides. Now there are um, two little holes here and here which I can cover with some paint. There's a little bit of bleed back here but it's not going to be enough to affect anything. My main focus was make sure the sides in here were all sealed so there wouldn't be any light leaks. And this is a little bit more orange in the camera than it actually is in person. It's really, really red in person. All right, so now I'll move on to the next part of the lights. Got the uh, wiring all done. Uh, it's not my best soldering work, but uh, everything's soldered, light blocked, these LEDs in the back, and then tacked everything down with some five minute epoxy so it's not going anywhere and also glued the uh, the red front grill piece in so what I need to do now is I need to get the clear pieces that go you know in for the marker lights and stuff and put everything together and then I'll come back and show you the finished piece everything is glued I've got it hooked up to a 9 volt. I had lost both of the plastic, uh, the clear plastic pieces that go here, so I wound up using 1 millimeter, 1.5 millimeter fiber optics for all the marker lights here. But they all work, they look good. Let me turn this overhead off. Came out looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. So, there's still some weathering stuff like that to do. Uh, but this is going to do it for part three. Part four, I'll be working on the lighting for the main hull. So, I want to thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for subscribing. And I'll see you for part four.